Okay, guys. How are you doing? Welcome to another Dutch Boyd Poker Show. I am, uh... I am Dutch Boyd. Playing the uh, WSP.com 3K Guaranteed Nightly tonight. And maybe some other tournaments, depending on how uh, how it goes, how we feel. It was a pretty short stream last night. I just lost it. I just completely lost it. I lost, uh... I lost all my energy all at once and just nosedived in the 30. And then in the 10, kept on playing uh, off stream, ended up Stone Cold Bubbling, which is two nights in a row I Stone Cold Bubbled. The first night, though, it was kind of like uh, an ICM fold my way to the bubble play. And the second night, it was just bad luck. We ended up uh, getting it all in with uh, Ace King against a King 8, losing that, and then uh, right around bubble time, having another Ace King and uh, shoving against uh, a min raiser, a caller, and getting called with pocket tens and missing. So there it goes. So we're playing the 3K Guaranteed Nightly tonight. Hope that all of you guys are doing well. Hope that your weekend has gone well. And us, we got a new background for, uh, for the WSP circuit that's going on at Bally's right now. I'll be in the ring hunt here. Let me go and take a look at the schedule. You guys want to see, uh, see what that schedule looks like? I know a few of you guys are going to be in town playing uh, playing for some rings. WSP Circuit. It's the very first time they've ever hosted it over at Bally's. And uh, I'm definitely going to be in for the main event, which is... 11A. Friday, March 4th. Is it this Friday? Yeah, this Friday. I'll definitely, I'll, I will definitely be playing that Friday and Saturday, March f uh, 4th and March 5th. I'll probably be playing the, the uh, March 5th one. I don't think I'm going to go two bullets on that. Just, uh, just the one, just the one on Saturday. Saturday fields are always a lot juicier. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So, uh, yeah, what else is going on? We got a no limit hold of monster stack. Maybe I'll play that one too on Thursday. Let me get the chat going here. See if anybody's around. Not yet. I don't think the the, the uh, delay is actually caught up yet. And guys, I will. Uh, I'll do my best to go ahead and make sure not to uh, not to bum out early tonight. Man, last night was so rough. All of a sudden, everything was going great, and then just nosedive. Um, I think it must be a side effect of, of uh, some medication. Back on the coffee tonight, so hopefully that'll perk me up. We got a couple familiar faces here at the table. Most uh, familiar is Caster, one of the top players on WSOP.com. A little bit of a... Uh, he's got a little donkey uh, emote, more just because he was kind of a... A little bit of an ass to me. A couple hands. Kind of, kind of rubbed salt in the wound a few times. So uh, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to listen to him anymore. Let's just go ahead and mute him. No good can come from these these interactions. Uh, yeah. But he's a good player. Make no mistake. Donkey does not mean a bad player. He's one of the best players on the site. What else do we have? Let me let me take a look at this uh, this tournament schedule. A monster stack on Thursday, a no limit hold'em turbo on Wednesday, a seniors event on Wednesday, three sixty five on Tuesday, five eighty on Tuesday, and what is tomorrow? Big O, Big O, and no limit hold'em three sixty five. Looks like they have a, a horse event tonight, but it's not a ring event. That would that would have been a fun one to play. Got a buddy just uh, SMS'd me, texted me, saying, what are you doing? My buddy Tapin, who is in town, he just uh, he just took down the Run Good Championship not too long ago for like 50000 So congratulations, Ryan Tapin. Uh, either one or two World Series of Poker Circuit Rings. I can't remember how many, but uh, he's in town. Going to go, uh, gonna have to have to hang out with him a little bit. 
which is not a chore, even though I say I'm going to have to. It is one of my favorite people in poker. Look at this. We got uh, we got the, the delay hitting up. So we got Poker Mindset Coach. Good to see you, Poker Mindset Coach. I hope that you're doing well. You're going to be playing that... Uh, you're gonna be playing that senior event on uh, on Wednesday, is it? If uh, if you're selling action, let us know. Anaconda, high low. It's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Another one of our fearless mods who uh, helps us out quite a bit in the uh, in the Hearthstone arena runs. It's been a little while, Ana Anaconda. I'm happy to see you. We got S maybe. Let's go, Decker Seven Eleven with the fist bumps. Decker. It's great to see you. How about you? Are you going to be playing some of those Bally's events? We've got uh, Imaginator. Imaginator, I love it. It's great to see you, Mr. Orr. And uh, Timmy Timify, our, our first crew members in the stream. It's great to see you. And guys, if you're, uh, if you're watching and uh, you can't chat, uh, I went ahead and switched it over to subchat only for a little while. I might switch it back. It's just, uh, huh. Let's continue like we're ahead here. Um, don't just know that it's not because it's not because I don't love you. It's because it was just getting too much and uh, it was a lot of stress. And uh, I need to keep the stress to a minimum at least for the next month or so. Uh, hey, Ferrari doctor, how are you doing, man? He says, "What's up, Dutch? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good." Um, Fredster, deciding to go all in with it. Um, yeah, Fredster. He, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and make the call here, I guess. Hopefully we're, yeah, we're, we're in good shape. So just like that, we, uh, is that a double up? Pretty close. Pretty close. Big dog for 11 months in a row. Great to see you here, big dog. And thank you very much for supporting the stream and the channel as long as you have 11 months. Can we get, uh, can we get some Dutch crew, uh, emotes for, uh, big dog? Thank you very much, big dog. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the resub, my friend. And we have uh, Tim. That's right, Tim Krosoft. He he nailed it. Sometimes the bull has it. That was so rough. Dead draw, Todd. How you doing, man? Eleven months in a row. Thank you so much for the uh, the continued support of the stream. Can we get, let's uh, let's get hit him up with some uh, Dutch crew emotes too. Dead draw, Todd. 11 months supporting the channel. Thank you so much, man. You know what? I gotta tell you, I have not had a lot of relationships that have lasted 11 months, to tell you the truth. I'm thinking about it. Oh, pretty much only two. Pretty much. And something else just happened. Let me take a look. We got 408 Shaytac. 408 Shaytac. It's not saying how long you've been with us, but 408. Shaytac, thank you so much for being here, man. We'll, uh, we'll give you guys some, uh, some more Dutch crew emotes. And uh, if there's anything I can do for you guys, I want you to know I'm here for you. Thank you, thank you for being here for me. I really appreciate it. So, Vice Chick, how are you doing? She says, uh, "Hi Dutch, take it down. I'm gonna try. I'm going to try." Speaking of taking it down, I stopped wearing my my Fitbit. Vice Chick and I are in a little bit of a a Fitbit challenge, and I think I think that we were in maybe this weekend. I'm dead in the water. How many steps do I have? I've got zero steps. I haven't moved all day. Ah, it's great to see you, Vice Check. I'm going to try to make some magic happen tonight. Look at this. we got Tyler219766 in the small blind. I wonder if that was just like uh, random numbers. It was just like 219766. Maybe uh, first six of a social security. Who knows? 219766. What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, I contemplate that. I'm going to think about whether I have to call here. I didn't think I'd do. It's just going to set a bad precedent if I let him just take uh, take the big blind with uh, less than less than three X rays from the small blind. Anti or no anti, we're going to have to see a flop with you, buddy. So here he fires out 237, half pot, and I'm going to go ahead and just call because I'm putting him on an ace, and uh, I'm going to let him continue to be. Uh, the aggressor here with what I think is probably going to be about three or seven outs. A nine is not an out for him. 
A 9 is not an out for him. He checks. He decides that he's not going to go ahead and fire it because he has an ace-10 and he wants the free card. Well, too bad, Tyler. Too bad. What do you got? 8, 9, 10, 11 outs now, 22%. So let's make it a three-quarter size bet. So Decker 711 also going to be playing uh, playing the WSP circuit. And then there's another five. So if he checks to us, can we get can we get a thin value bet? Can we get called with worse? Well, King Jack is ahead. And he had us the whole way, the whole time. Tyler 219, 766, nice value bet there. Nice value bet. Had us out kicked. Well done. We're down to 12,600. 12, and he has a question mark. Question mark. Like, uh, I think you forgot to type the first part of that sentence, Tyler. Sentence. Making the fold. He's like, why? Why? Maybe why did I call pre-flop in position with Jack-8? Uh, I think you forgot to type the first part of that sentence. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate the kind words. Now back to the back to the info tab for me. I only get in trouble when I uh when I talk to the other players. It was a good value bet though. I think uh I'm trying to think. So he probably checked on the turn, putting me on kind of a float, but So he decided to go ahead and let me go let me bluff. If I was floating, I guess I, I I don't know. I mean, it was an interesting line. It was I don't hate the line. Firing out a pre, you know, raising pre flop. I think that I would have raised more. I think I would have probably made it three x instead of uh, he made it two point three eight x. Magic Harry, Magic Harry, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. Can we get uh, can we get some uh, some of those crew emotes for Magic Harry? You've been with us a long time, and thank you so much for supporting the channel and making uh, making uh, the, the the Twitch you know keeping the Twitch stream alive. It's really great uh, of you to be here. Thank you, my friend, Magic Harry. So, yeah, I, I think I, with that hand with Tyler two one nine seven six six, I think I would probably would have raised a little bit more pre flop, and then when you actually hit your pair, Queen Jack uh, Rag. Firing out a continuation bet is, is pretty much par for the course. Uh, checking the turn when the 9 it comes. So what was it? Queen, Jack, 5. So then it comes a 9. He checks the turn. I think that I probably would have continued the drive. Though I don't hate it. I really don't hate it. Um, if he puts me on some sort of weird float or uh, some sort of draw, a lot of times that 9 is going to go ahead and get a, a bet from me. And then... When the, the board pairs, and now he's looking at a king, now he's not too worried about, well, what? He's not really worried about a jack-9, if that's what I had. Um, it's going to be one of those situations where he's looking at it and thinking, well, would, would I continue to bluff? And there's really not a lot of hands I could have there that don't have showdown value that I would continue bluffing with uh, once he calls the turn. So he decides instead of checking to induce a bluff or perhaps a thinner value bet than what he would have which i would have actually value bet if he checked he decides to go ahead and fire out a half pot size bet i approve i think that that was uh, a good line to take he can easily get called with worse any jack is going to call him maybe even any nine like if i had a nine ten or like an ace nine hell i might have even called him with ace high i might have even called him with like an ace high so, uh, well played, Tyler.
We got Shorty Lambert in, in the uh, in the stream. Good to see you, Shorty. We also have uh, Joshua Jackaway. Saw that you uh, saw that you resubbed not too long ago, Josh. Thank you very much for that, and uh, I hope that your weekend is going well. We got Scorpio 1107. We got Thomas Skidmore. Tim Krasoff said clearly he had a better jack than you. I mean, duh, Dutch. Yes, clearly. It's much it's much clearer four minutes after the fact for you than it is for me when I'm actually living it in the moment because of that delay. Uh, I'm just I'm just joking with you, Tim. Yeah, it was close though. Jack A King Jack. Jack A King Jack. Make the fold here. I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. Okay, guys, so we're 6 out of 47. Let me go ahead and open up the lobby, see if there's anything else we want to play. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like there's anything to really late reg right now. Um, there's a $10 rebind add-on coming up here in a little while, but I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to just focus on this tournament. Let's just focus on the 30, the 3K. Should be a good prize pool. Uh, I'm going to guess somewhere around... Somewhere around 2K, 2100, 2200. We got Jared R in the stream. Great to see you, Jared. And I uh, hope that your weekend is going well. So Tyler219766 now making a min raise. I, I feel like it's just... I don't really like the min raising. I think that... Uh, you know, I like it later on. I, I like it when the effective stacks are smaller. I like it when it's, uh, you know, the Andes have kicked in and, it, you know, a min raise is actually a significant percentage of a player's stack. But with, with these kind of deep stacks, and, t and Tyler, you're probably the uh, the chip leader at this point, right? If not, and no, I guess you're second. I just feel like... Uh, you, you, you just, you're, you're just giving a lot of hands the right price to call... And you're going to be out of position. I, th I think that you're better off. You know, the, the goal here early on should be to inflate the pot, get to get to the point where you're playing for a, a big pot in in the late rounds. You know, you you want to play for stacks if you can when you have a big hand against a second, you know, against a good second best hand. So making it three x early on is kind of my mo. I can even see a, a, a an argument for three point five x. 4x it starts to get a little bit heavy and you, you start getting into a spot where uh, you're, you're probably just not going to get called with worse so EC Carolan and Isildur 1 I think I'm going to go ahead and continue as if I have uh, well as if I have a pocket pair and didn't need to improve um, ace tens and uh, ace queens are going to probably fold maybe call for a turn well, King of Hearts hits. What does Isildur 1 do with his pocket nines? Pre-flop razor, under the gun razor. Was it a bluff? Or was it a, uh, was it a claiming bet? I don't know. We'll never know. We don't know what this other one had. If it was an ace queen, then it's me just claiming my equity. If it's pocket nines, then it's me trying to get him off of the better hand. I don't know. What I do know is I'm not going to check and put him in a situation where he can bet and put me to a really uh, awkward call. You know, king, jack, rag, rag. Okay, a little 6 3 offsuit getting uh, three and a half to one. Sure. Let's see it. So, hitting a pair with the flush draw, not so bad. This is the one, what do you think about that? Um, if we check raise here, I think that a lot of times we get through. And now we're probably going to get called with uh, the ace-queens, ace-jacks. I guess not. <sighs> okay. Coffee it. Let's coffee it. B-Trail hitting Vegas Tuesday for the rest of the circuit events. So, uh, B-Trail. Playing uh, the monster stack? Is that the, what's, what's going on on Tuesday? Or, in, okay, no. Let's, let, let's, let, let's load it up on stream, you guys. Let's load up the... Uh, 
Let's load up the schedule right here on the stream. I don't really see us playing a 10-4 suited. Do you? You think we're going to play that? Nah, we'll get out of the way. B Shriever's good. We'll get away from that. Oh, well, with that, this many people in it, maybe uh, maybe we, we call Nah. Why? So that we can hit a flush against a bigger flush and uh, end up doubling somebody up? Let's not. Let's not, and let's just uh, load up the schedule. This is what we're looking for. Here we are. Maximize it. And what is today? We've got... Start on Thursday. It looks like it, the very first event is uh, 365. Do we have some updates from you guys? Doug Carley's 101st Circuit Cash. Doug's a good guy. You know, he's been uh, he, he's been on the... Uh, Doug Rico Carley. He's been on the trail for quite a while. His, uh, he, he travels along with his wife. It's the same one I'm thinking about. Look at this. We got Cody Sloba. Sloba. I always Sloba. How do you say his last name? I always mess it up. Dennis Phillips is there. Steve Booty is there. Robert Hankins, four-time circuit ring winner. Wow. What a champ. Brandon Fish. Cody Pack. The players who almost didn't make it here. And... How many players are left? Looks like 30, uh, 32 players left. So they are uh, well in the money. Do we have... Uh, it'd be kind of cool if we could see uh, chip counts. First place, 55,000, so going to be a pretty good day for somebody. Well, let's get back to the schedule, and let's see what we're all going to be playing here. So Tuesday, B-Trail. By the way, I'm, I've got a, uh, got a little hand that's brewing here. Check it out. Pocket sixes, let's hit a set. But not... A set over like not, let's not hit the set versus the other set. Uh, you're not sure deciding to go ahead and pump it up a little bit. Well, that kind of sucks. We're still getting the right odds to call. <sighs> Just a set mine. I mean, uh, with you're not sure making this raise, it, it, it pretty much narrows you're not sure's hand to uh, an ace king or a bigger pocket pair. So. Either way, I think that we could end up stacking them if we hit our set of sixes. Here we go. Hopefully we're not up against a, a set of queens. This is where we hope that you're not sure it has ace-king and not aces. We are gonna, like, take over the poker room. Chinch dog. Good to see you. Good to see you subbing 12 months in a row. A whole year you've been with us. Chinch Dog, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate you being here. Can we get some uh, some Dutch crew uh, emotes for Chinch Dog? You are awesome, man. Really appreciate it. So you're not sure. Looks like he is pretty happy with it. Or he's got pocket kings. Okay, so he didn't have ace king yet, ace queen, and that played out about uh, about as good as it could have. You know, we're putting him on a pretty specific hand, thinking that if uh, if we do hit a, hit a set, then we're going to be able to stack him. And we did hit a set, and we did stack him. So it's not going to happen that often. It's going to happen what eight and a half to one? Is that is, 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 is do I have the right odds there? So when he made it 1,300 more and there's 12,000 to win, you know, we need somewhere around, 
you know, a little bit, we're getting a little bit better than eight and a half to one, assuming that we're going to be able to stack him if we hit. And if we don't hit, and he's got ace, king, or ace, queen, well, you know, we've, we've got the best hand. So, chip leader feels pretty good. Poker mindset coach, what I'm talking about is very early on before the antis kick in and the and the stacks are very deep. Uh, I, I did a whole thing about tapering down. Tapering down. Uh, when the stacks when the effective stacks are really big, really deep, uh, I you know, I have always been making it three X in these in, in these three K guarantees, you know, pre uh, pre ante. Um uh, like like right now, if I'm if I'm raising at the eighty one sixty level, I'm making it four eighty which is 3x. I think at the early, early, early blind levels, 2040, when you're holding, you know, 8,000, you know, 8,000 chips and you're looking at 200 big blinds effective, well, the idea when you raise pre-flop is that you want, you're trying to inflate the pot because of that exponential nature of betting, right? Because the flop bet is uh, directly tied with how much you can get in pre-flop. The amount that you can bet on the turn and the river then is directly tied with how much you can get, uh, you know, how much you can get in on the flop. So the more you make it, you know, like if you if you end up making it, let's say, we'll make it, we'll we'll try to make it, you know, for simplicity's sake, we're we'll, we're playing fifty one hundred with uh, thirty thousand in front of us. So we, you know, everybody has, you know, starts with thirty thirty thousand chips, and we start at fifty hundred blinds. So everyone has 300 big blinds. If we if we ended up making it 200 preflop for two big blinds, and let's say that we get one caller, so there's uh, 450 in the middle because the caller is the big blind, and then we uh, bet half the pot, or we bet the same amount post flop, so we're betting another 200, and then you know we we hit our big hand, okay, or we started with the big hand, so then the turn bet is going to be 400. And the river bet would be able to maybe get eight hundred, maybe nine hundred. Um, you know, if you if you end up you know, making it three x instead of two x early on, then that river bet ends up being, you know, instead of nine hundred, you're looking at you know three hundred pre flop, three hundred post flop, six hundred on the turn, and then you know twelve, thirteen hundred on the river. So you're you're increasing the the potential river bet where uh, now it starts getting kind of significant. You're increasing that by 50%. Um, the upside basically is increased by 50%. And since you know the the stacks are so enormous to begin with, you know your your goal for raising pre-flop in in those early stages of the tournament, uh, Poker Mindset Coach, is to inflate the pot. You, you know you're not bluffing. You're not you're not blind stealing early on. You're you're betting hands that can potentially make a really big hand against a really good second best hand. And uh, when that happens, you want the pot to get as big as possible. So that's the idea. And then you taper down based on the effective stacks. You know, you, you, taper, you, you taper your raises down, your preflop raises down, um, as the effective stacks get smaller and smaller in relation to the big blind. As your strategy changes from inf you know pot inflation to blind stealing you know from you know as it changes from you know at this point if we steal a blind it, it's such a small insignificant percentage of our of our stack that it doesn't really matter but later on in the tournament it matters it matters quite a bit you know you're looking at 4 or 5% sometimes 10% of your stack if you can uh, if you can get away with a blind steal so your motivations change as soon as those antis kick in, and uh, you're, you're, you, like the, 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 the question of do you want the call, the answer changes too. So jack 10 off suit, I'm going to make the fold there. Win by TKO, got to love that uh, Dutch Bitcoin emoticon. It's great to see you here, win by TKO. I like that. Uh, 408 Shade Tech. No, he says. He says, uh, I just busted in that Ballet's event. 
thanks to Dutch. Sorry, buddy. Asking where my better at half is. She is uh, she's in the other room reading a book. And she uh, she says hello. She'll probably be on the stream at some point in the future again. She's not she's not taking a vacation forever. You know, there's good stress and there's bad stress, but all stress right now is, uh, I'm trying to keep it to a minimum, and having her on the stream does add a little bit of stress, to tell you guys the truth. It's good stress. It's the good kind of stress. But when I'm trying to focus on the tournament, trying to win something here, trying to make, uh, trying to make some money and put up some numbers, sometimes, sometimes she can be a little bit of a distraction, and she knows this. Maverick BP... Maverick BP resub four months in a row. Maverick, thank you so much. You know, I feel like you've been uh, a sub longer than that. I think that uh, there was probably a, a small little hiatus, but because uh, I, I feel like Maverick, you've been with us almost since the beginning. Can we get uh, can we get some Dutch crew emotes from Maverick BP? You're the best man. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, guys, every once in a while, Maverick BP will uh, you know he he lists his tournaments. Tournament packages on uh, tastysteaks.com. He has a chance to uh, get into the World Series of Poker uh, by through winning some sort of league that he's up uh, that he's up in in his neighborhood. Definitely wish you the best of luck in that. Nice, nice river card there. You're not sure. You got it all in is the best of it. So nice hand. Uh, so guys, yeah, definitely show Maverick BP some love. He's supported us for you know quite a while now, and uh, I, I I wish you the best of luck, my friend. I hope that things go well for you uh, this year. I hope that you get everything out of poker that you're looking to get. We're going to go ahead and make the 500 raise under the gun with the 8-9 suited. This is the kind of hand that, uh, I mean, now our motivations change a little bit. Now we're kind of thinking we can uh, sometimes get away with a blind steal. But we're also kind of thinking that 8-9 suited plays pretty well. Uh, it's going to be pretty concealed if we hit. If we don't hit, we can represent something bigger. Maverick BP liking the backdrop. You like that? You like the little WSOP circuit backdrop right behind us? So this is kind of an, an interesting hand. We can go ahead and represent the ace here. And uh, Savannah might have the ace, but it, it's kind of an awkward position for Savannah given that she's got to call and have to worry about Tyler, both of us having pretty big stacks. So when she calls, it's probably game over for our... Uh, for our 8-9 unless we improve here. Jack is not improving. So check and hope that we get a free card here on the turn. Well, we're on the turn, but hope that we get a free card on the river and we hope that it's an 8 or a 9 because that's really the only way I see winning this hand. <sighs> yeah, you win. Nice hand there, Savannah. Thank you very much for letting me fold with uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of face. Bromiliad. People call super wide, especially from the blinds. Don't want to give good odds to people to call and out draw. End up with a four to five callers from early position with min raise pre ante. That's true. You know, here you, you don't want to give people the, the right odds to call with any two. And when you when you make the min raise and you're deep stacked, they they do have those kind of odds. It's, if they play well post flop and they feel like they can play better than you, they can call with any two and be right. You know, we, we saw that we called with that 3-6. I mean, I don't think that that was the wrong play. Um, we, we just weren't... We, we were getting the right, the right pot odds, straight pot odds, and when you, when you factor in implied odds and you think, okay, I can get away from, from uh, strong hands and I can get value from weak hands, uh, that's just not really where you want to be, you know, if you're, if you're playing against someone who's, who's under that mindset, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and make the call here. 450 isn't going to get us out. It's going to be like an any 2 same thing. I will make the check to you, Savannah. I got to make a quick text to my little brother. My little brother, Bobby Big Buy-In. Yeah, win by TKO, that's pretty much it. When you're on one of the poles, any stress is bad stress. That's pretty much right. 
pretty much right. Okay, let me see if I can get... Uh... Sorry, guys. And Savannah, a little bit of an overbet there. It looked like you uh, probably missed out on some value. When it came uh, 5, 6, 9, 10, ace, and the river bet, you're... F wow, how did it get so big? I guess not. Firing out 4,930 on the end, I mean, it wasn't that big of an overbet. She, she played it fine. So seven nine off suit, yeah. What would what would we do? <sighs> Four oh eight Shaytac pocket tens versus Ace King. That's pretty much exactly what. Uh, that's pretty. That's exactly how I bubbled in the uh, ten dollar event last night that you guys didn't see because I was uh, playing it off stream. That was exactly it. Hmm. Looks like my little carved case is uh is chipping. So Bromeliad, one thing that I wanted to mention too though is when you have a really strong hand, you're not you're not trying to raise them out. You know, if you if you have like aces or kings, J Jones six seven seven zero J Jones, eleven months in a row. Guys, can we get some Dutch crew emails for J Jones? Jones, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for supporting the channel as long as you have. Eleven months. It's a long time to stick with me. Really appreciate you, man. Really do. Um. Uh, Thanks, man. Let's 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 see, let's give it up for Jones. Okay, guys. When uh, when you got a hand like aces or kings, you don't want to get under the impression of uh, of uh, you know rooting for folds there. You know, ideally, you make it you know three x or as much as you can four x early on, and the whole table calls you. This is good. You want everybody to call. You just have to be willing to get away from the hand. You know, you have to be willing to look down and say, "Look, it's just a pair," but it's it's going to be a favorite against any play. You know, like when you have that strong of a hand, it's going to be a favorite against anybody who's coming up against you. And even though there is a little bit of a pooling effect, where if the whole table calls you, well, you know, you're no longer a favorite to win the hand uh, against the field, but. Uh, your your equity goes up with every single call, so don't get into the, into that trap of of ever rooting for a fold when you have a big hand like that. You know, you, I hear people say this all the time. You know, I gotta I gotta protect my hand, so I bet enough that they can't call. That's not really what you're trying to do with good hands. You're trying to get value out of good hands. You don't want to protect your hand by betting players out. You want to you you want to protect your hand by by betting when you're the favorite and betting enough where you know they're they're getting slightly the wrong odds to make the call you know if they've got uh if yeah and, and it, it, it's a, it's a balancing act for sure but don't ever get into that in that situation where oh i know he's got the flush so i'm all in so he can't call that's not what you're trying to do. You know, if if you know the guy's got the flush, uh, what you should be trying to do is bet, let, let's say that you're on the turn, so he's got nine outs, right? He's got nine outs to make his flush, and uh, and you know that's what he's got. So he's he got somewhere around 18, 17% equity in the hand. So what you're trying to do is give him, uh, you know, a, a worse than four to one. To make the call and let him think that there's implied odds that there's not you know so <sighs> betting half the pot there gives him three to one um if you bet half the pot there and he calls and then he makes the flush and you can get away from the hand then 
You know, you, you played it perfectly. What you don't want to do is bet the pot and so, so the, and, and get the fold. You're not rooting for the fold there. Um, I, I will say, you know, there's going to be some situations where, you know, m maybe just claiming the equity is is uh, important enough. Um. Uh, but for overall you're you're rooting for you're rooting for the call when you have the favorite you want to increase the pot you want to get you know you want to get more money out of your opponents so don't ever fall into that trap of thinking oh i got to raise enough so that i'll get folds with good hands you don't want folds with good hands you want them calling you yeah boy Casey says i eventually get there just hard uh leave here when people when poker is soft here in indiana you know, you know, Casey. It sounds like it's uh, it sounds like it's really good. I mean, you you were uh, talking about having a two K day the other the uh, the other day, which is uh, pretty amazing. I hope that uh, I hope that you just keep on crushing it. I hope that you just keep on crushing it. Hey, Ferrari Doctor, you have a good night. I'll try to make these. Uh, I'll try to make these weekend streams a little earlier, Ferrari. I know that we're kind of getting off to a late start, and probably not going to be streaming next weekend because of that uh, because of that Bally Circuit event. So the Bally Circuit main event is going to start for us on Saturday, and hopefully go into you know deep into uh, uh, into day two on Sunday. Cold coffee. Cold coffee. You guys heard, been hearing about that 22 push-ups for 22 days for uh, uh, veteran suicide awareness. I think I'm going to take uh, a part in that. 22 push-ups for 22 days. I had a, uh, a little brother, a little, ha a little stepbrother, George. George Byron Seibert, who uh, was a veteran and uh, committed suicide when he got back. So I'm very much aware of the issues and the problem. Very, uh, very much personally affected by, by that. So uh, yeah, I can do uh, I can do some push-ups. Twenty-two push-ups in twenty-two days. What is that? We're looking at four hundred and forty. 484 push-ups. I'll do that. I'll do that for George. You know, it's funny. Every time I work out, uh, I think about George. I think about uh, him running next to me. Yeah. Anyway, we're second in chips. There's a lot to be happy about. Seattle Pro, Pro, thank you very much for the host. Spasiba Moya Droog. It's great to see you, Seattle. I hope that uh, things are great for you. Oh, man. SD Bub, good to see you in the stream. We've got, uh, you know what? I gotta change some things about this, uh, about this layout too, you guys. I've been thinking about it. I think that what we're gonna do, I think we're gonna change. Uh, we'll have a, a, a top donators thing in the, in the panel, and we're gonna change the donation uh, scrolly bar to uh, let's make that just like that. We're gonna change that for uh, to uh, maybe session donators or weekly donators. I feel like. Every once in a while, we get like a five dollar donation or a ten dollar donation, and it pops up, you know, the little June notification, and then it just kind of disappears. And I feel like, you know, that's that's not really what we're trying to do. And then um, I don't know, might change some colors. Michelle has been talking about doing some uh, some animation highlights as well, 
some highlight reels and uh, kind of sandwiching that in, you know, sandwiching the stream in. So like having an intro and an outro, and uh, in the commercial breaks have have maybe some highlight reels as well. She's been getting into this animation stuff. Aceldur making the min raise T one one B seven in the in the button making the call and yeah we're not going anywhere unless Tyler is uh, you know decides to to uh, three bet here we're gonna go ahead and see a flop with the the computer hand Queen seven offsuit the computer hand Avid Day says ah poker stream that's what I need now Avid Day uh, happy to give you what you need buddy it's great to see you here. It's great to see you here. Tim Grossop says, I'm having an existential crisis because I recently learned that I could be a millennial. Making the call here. And this is a term I hadn't heard of until my late 20s. And uh, since I think of all millennials as pseudo mentally retarded, I now think I may need to kill myself. Your thoughts? Don't do it. Don't do it. You should never joke about suicide. But, uh... Millennials are cool. Millennials are cool. Millennials are great. Millenn millennials. I don't think that you're. Uh, let's see. If you were born in 1985, I don't really think that you. Uh, well, no. That's gonna. That's gonna classify. That's gonna qualify. I, this is how I see it, Tim Krasoff. This is how I would probably draw the line. If you remember when there was no Google, that is, uh, you know, or maybe like maybe if. If you remember when there was no Alta Vista, we'll, we'll, we'll dial it back just a little bit more. I would say that there is definitely a, 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 a like the divide probably should be the internet. The divide probably should be uh, specifically the World Wide Web. Once you know, once browsers happened, once uh, you know, once people could you know look stuff up in a search engine. If if you were old enough to remember when we had encyclopedias, then uh, I, I think that you're probably more on the Gen X side or the Gen Y side than the millennial side. I feel like I'm a little bit young to be Gen X. You know, I mean, I do remember watching Reality Bites. Um... But I, I also feel like I'm, 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 I'm definitely not a millennial. I was, I was born in '80. I don't think that Bobby Big Buy-in is a millennial. When, when I think millennial, I think, uh, you know, like my little brother Austin, who never had a time when he couldn't look up something on the internet. <sighs> Making the fold. <laughs> Bromeliad, is Twitchy Award an actual thing? Because if it is, I accept your nomination. It's funny. Yeah, Imaginator, I'm talking about that... Um, you know, risk aversion, you know, coming, uh, you know, saying, I think it comes a bit from uh, fear of bad beats and an innate desire to protect my... Let, let me read you what he said for uh, for people who aren't in the in the chat who might be watching this on uh, YouTube later on or uh, watching the, uh, the, uh, the replays. He says, that was a great reminder. This is for, coming from Imaginator, our buddy uh, Mr. Orr. Uh, says, that was a great reminder on how to bet strong hands best for value. I needed to hear that. Fell into the trap of raising to get people to fold rather than extract max value when I have the best of it. Uh, and, and make no mistake, you guys. I mean, there are there are times when your motivation when you, when you bet or raise is to get the fold. You know, those are called bluffs or semi-bluffs. Um... Uh, but when you have when you have the best hand and when you think that you have the best hand, you're not betting to get the fold. You're betting to extract value and get the call. He says, I think it comes from a bit from uh, fear of bad beats and an innate desire to protect my hand. So, yes, this is risk aversion. This is risk aversion. This is uh, a cognitive bias that pretty much everybody falls under and, and falls into. You know, it's funny because 
for hundreds of years, e economists have been saying that you know people act rationally. That they make the best. You know, they make rational decisions and rational choices, which maximize their own expected value. And people, you know, the the rational man is a selfish man who's trying to just um, get the best value for himself. You know, it wasn't until the 60s and the 70s when uh, the hippie economists came around. You got Kahneman and uh, Tversky, the, you know, Amos uh, Tversky and Daniel Kahneman, kind of the pioneers in this whole behavioral economics field, where uh, they, they found that actually people are not rational actors. Um, they fall under uh, all sorts of irrational behavior. And... Uh, yeah, you know, we we call the, those kinds of irrational behavior. Wow, I am so heavy in chips. I'm I'm tempted not even to take the rebuy, but we're taking the rebuy. We're taking the rebuy. We call those irrationalities um, cognitive biases, biases. I think that the plural of bias is biases. So cognitive biases. Um, one of those is risk aversion. People are inclined to lock in a win rather than risk a sure thing so to give you an example let's say that uh you you have a lottery ticket a scratch off lottery ticket and and uh and, and don't be playing scratch off lottery tickets okay they are very very rarely plus ev though they can be but they're not not for you and me there was the case of a math professor who uh who w was able to successfully win a few hundred thousand dollars from scratch-off tickets because uh, he would wait until a certain scratch-off game. They they would report sales numbers in his state, and you know he would see okay, well there are X amount of tickets left, and the big prizes still haven't been taken. Oh look at this! That scratch-off is now a plus EV thing, and he would just drive around to every single gas station in his state from north to south, east to west, uh, buying every scratch off ticket in that category that he could find, ended up winning a few hundred thousand dollars. That is uh, hooray for math, you know, go science. But uh, back to cognitive biases, biases, and risk aversion. Let's say that you have a scratch off ticket, you win a hundred dollars, and you're like, okay, wow, I won. Now you have another little, little thing that you can scratch off that We'll double it. We'll double it 52% of the time. So 52% of the time, you end up with $200. 48% of the time, it's a worthless ticket. So uh, do you scratch it or not? Well, economists would say, scratch it. Scratch it. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a plus EV uh, move. It's a plus, you know, your expected value is, uh, you know, is is higher if you scratch and go for the uh, the double up than if you don't. Uh, but people are more inclined not to scratch it. This is why, you know, what, what was that? What was that uh, show with the with the with the models in the suitcases? And it'd be like, oh, twenty one. I'll, I'll I'll pick twenty one, and then you would like eliminate the million dollars, or it would eliminate the twenty dollars, or whatever. And you'd be like, yes, okay. And then some producer would call the phone and offer you the buyout. And people would be like, oh, should I take it? And they'd look at their family, and their family would, take the money, take the money. Now we're going to let it ride. Let's go for it. No deal. No deal. And they'd keep on going. And the deal was always bad. You know, it was always bad, yet a lot of people would take the deal. Because people are risk averse. Because this is a cognitive bias that we all fall on, into is we want to lock up the wins. We don't want to put a win at risk. It hurts more to lose than it feels good to win. Uh, and once you can wrap your head around that, you still fall into the trap. You know, that's the funny thing about cognitive bias. It doesn't matter if you're aware of it or not. You're, you're still going to be affected by it. <sighs> but I do think that being aware of it um, does m minimize it to a certain ex extent. I don't know uh, what kind of... I don't know what kind of uh, studies have been done on that, what kind of academic papers have been done on that. But uh, yeah, Imaginator he says, any thoughts on how to handle those fear thoughts when they pop up? Mindfulness exercises? Mindfulness exercises. I mean, 
look, I think the benefits of, of uh, mindfulness meditation are pretty much scientifically backed. I'm not really one for, you know, for any sort of mumbo jumbo, you know, mystical thinking type. But, uh, you know, there, there is room for spiritualness in science. I, I think that there, uh, you know, there's, Sam Harris wrote a book, Waking Up, not too long ago, which, uh, you know, talks about mindfulness meditation. We don't really know where consciousness comes from or where its limits are. It very well could be that, uh, you know, very much like how all the neurons in your brain make up the consciousness, which is you, maybe all the consciousnesses, you know, which we are, make up a greater collective consciousness. There's, the, we, we don't know. You know, it, it could easily be the case that, uh, you know, consciousness, uh, you know, emerges from complex systems and, uh, and that we are a part of a greater consciousness. That could be the case. We wouldn't know it. We wouldn't know it, but maybe you know, through practices like mindfulness meditation, you can drop that kind of ego. Uh, there, there, there have been you know, scientific studies which, which show positive benefits from mindfulness meditation. So go for that. Will that, will that make it so that you uh, aren't trying to bet people off when you have the best of it? Will that make it so that you're not risk averse anymore? No, I, I don't think so. How can you be be more zen about losses and wins? If I knew, I would tell you. I would tell you, bro, but I don't. I don't know, Imaginator. Yeah, Avid Day 04. That's... That's that's a very good reason not to joke about it because when you joke about suicide and people think you're serious, then you got an you got an issue. Then you got an issue. Then you got people who are uh, trying to commit you and trying to make sure. No, it's like no, I'm not. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. Shorty Lambert says, what if you remember when there were no TV remotes, or better yet, pre-cable TV? Shorty Lambert, how are you still alive? You must be eating right. Freezer, making the call. And uh, yeah, Freezer, I will go ahead and fire out all three bullets here, I think. When my TKO says, I remember having to change the TV channel with a pair of pliers. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. And Seattle Pro says, hey, did you see that pic on, Twitch, uh, on, uh, on Twitter? Let me, let me go really quick to the, the Twitterverse. Seattle Pro. You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and make the fold here with a King Jack offsuit. Shorty Lambert says, playing video games on an Atari 1000 makes you not a millennial. Uh, <laughs> Promelia says, if you were excited when your family first got a VHS player. I I'll tell you what I was excited was when I, when I realized that you could tape movies. And, uh, you know, I, I, you remember you'd go to your, uh, your, your, your friend's house and your friend's dad would have like the the bookshelves where it would just be movie, 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 movie on VHS and like he'd get out the eight hour VHS and he'd record movie after movie and then he'd write what the movie was on like, and then sometimes they'd tape over it so they'd cross it out and tape over it and yeah, we, we all had those friends, right? Yeah. <sighs> Rip to Papa. Good to see you, Rip to Papa. I think that I owe you a welcome message, right? I think, I'm not sure if Exmo sent that over or not. If not, you know what, I'll, I'll get on it. I promise you I'll get on it. Uh, I don't think, Tim Krosoff, that 16.6K was a bod. I think it was 14.4 uh, and then it went to 28.8. 
So, maybe you are a millennial. Maybe you are. Was there a 16.6 modem? Because I think it was a 14.4, and then it went to 28.8. Could be wrong. And yeah, the first time I heard of millennials, uh, the, the word millennial. Wow, Deluxe, why do you do this to me, buddy? Why do you do this to me? Why do you make me want to just bet? Well, got caught with her hand in the cookie jar there. Queen nine's going to do it. Deal or no deal. That was it, Poker Mindset Coach. That was the... Uh, the lame ass game show where they kept on offering deals that were bad. Okay, guys, so we were talking about cognitive bias. We were talking about uh, risk aversion, and we ended up not taking our break. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the break time screen on and uh, go raid the kitchen for a little bit of calories, keep that blood sugar high. Kaepernicking, nice hand. Kaepernicking. It's a funny username. Okay, so Deluxe making the open limp again. We're going to go ahead and make it 680, 780, 880, 960. So we would be making it 680 uh, if everyone folded. So the, uh, the standard preflop raise plus the open limp. 960, here we go. Haha, <laughs> Flatfish says, I was my older brother's remote control for years. I could, I could see that. Flatfish, go change it to channel 13. Hey, if flat flatfish. Uh, okay, nine, ten, seven. Not the worst flop. We've got backdoor uh, flush opportunities. Let's go ahead and uh, half pot size bet it. I think Deluxe probably has that fold any uh, to any bet checked. So we only really have to get through freezer. We got through. I was content with the squiggly lines, or rather, curves. <laughs> F-Link. Avidae says, I was excited when I got my NES. I remember when I got my NES. Old school Nintendo Entertainment System. Hmm. Wasn't there a time Scorpio when there wasn't, uh, when you, you didn't even have the rotary phones, you just had, you had to go through the operator, you, you picked it up, and you're like, operator, please connect me to, uh, uh, number seven, right away, please, please connect me, can you, can you dial a number for me, uh, the number is 43. Yeah, certainly. I'll, I'll connect you to Joan. Guys, I'll be right back.
Seattle Pro, I saw the picture. I'm glad that you finally got those uh, those gaming glasses. You know, they help. They really do. They, they will uh, block out the blue light. And using it in conjunction with a program like Flux, you'll find that you, you'll sleep better. It lowers eye strain. Uh, I don't wear them on stream because it, it causes quite a bit of reflection because I've got, you know, some lighting here. But when I'm, uh, when I'm, when I'm going through a gaming session or uh, grinding on my own, I'll wear them, and they help. I hope that you enjoy them. I'm glad that you got them. <sighs> really glad that you got them, man. <laughs> Tim Krosoff says, oh, alcohol. Why have you taken all of my memories? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Oh, my gosh. Phil took, uh, Phil took fourth. Nicely done, man. Nicely done. Phil took, uh, or fifth. Fifth in the 400. I didn't, I didn't see that. Nicely done, man. Really happy to uh, hear that. Well done. So, have a good night, Maverick BP. Thank you very much for stopping by. Gosh, LA Plum. Okay, buddy, I'm going to go ahead and give you that uh, bony fish. I wonder if we can get through uh, sit tight here. It just seems so transparent, doesn't it? It really does. It seems so transparent. Let's just go ahead and see a free flop. We're giving L.A. Plum the bony fish for uh, open limping. Just don't do it. Don't do it. If I was sit tight, I think that I probably would have raised him. Yeah, very well done for Will Phil. Okay, a little ace two, ace two off suit here. Diaper changer, making the men raise under the gun. Sit tight, deciding to come along for the ride. A lot of chips there. Sit tight. I wonder how. Uh, I wonder how sit tight got him. Uh, five to one. To what? Two parrot. Yeah, and that commercial break was brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Crunch Cereal. So, the crunch is so loud, I'm going to have to mute it while I uh, chow down.
you know what? That was pretty good. I'm going to get a little bit more. I'll be right back. I don't understand how this could be good for you, but the box is, it says it's good for you. Part of a complete breakfast. It's got to be good for you. Tastes like peanut butter cups. It's awesome. Wow, look at that. Three times in a row. Money Miser won. Uh, you know, it wasn't... It, it would have been okay to call, but at the same time, it's like... It's, it's, it's pretty optimistic to make that call. You also might not get a, uh, y y it might not work out like you think. Man, we would so rarely do this. We so rarely do this, but I, uh, I think Ovidio is either, uh, smashing us and, and is going to call or is drawing dead to three outs. So I'm going to go ahead and check back and we'll see what Ovidio does on the turn. Yeah, I think that we're actually looking pretty good with like a, Ovidio having like an ace-10, ace-jack is kind of what I'm thinking. Well, king-5 will do it too. So Ovidio was actually just crushing us. Didn't get a lot of value for that hand there, Ovidio. And Tim Grossoft, for your information, I've actually lost about 13 pounds since the new year.
Yeah, it's too big of a bet there. You're not sure. This is why you got the bony fit. This is why you have the fish in front of you. Too big of a bet. 7,423 at the 200 400 level. Uh, well, it's not that bad. What is that? 18 and a half bigs? It's not that bad, I guess. It feels like it's too much of a bet. And now L.A. Plum making the min raise. What does it mean? Your guess is as good as mine, but we've seen L.A. Plum uh, take a different line with, uh, you know, pre-flop in about the same position. It's got to correlate to something, so my guess is that it's correlating to hand strength. <laughs> reading some of these twitters Fist bump. Fist bump in Russian. It looks like this. I like that. Fist bump. So, uh, it's not like a translation. That's actually how you uh, spell fist bump in, uh, in, in Cyrillic. So now you're not sure we're making a big raise here. Let's get out of the way. Four will fill. It's a good question. Why are diamonds red? And hearts blue in a four color deck in WSOP. They got it wrong. That's why. Diamonds are supposed to be blue. It's supposed to be like blue diamond. Like blue diamond almonds or blue diamond road. And uh, hearts are supposed to be the uh, the red color in the four color deck. Just like, it, just like they got this wrong. 
It's supposed to be clubs are green and spades are black. They got it wrong. That's the only uh, that's the only explanation. They got it wrong. I think it's actually reverse Pokemon set coach. Jar, good to see you. Wishing me the best of luck. Thank you very much for that. Let me make sure that there's no one else in here before I do something like that. Tim grows soft, saying my brother got me a Fitbit and after it came one day of like 45 steps, I thought, oh well, this is the worst gift ever. It's like a watch that tells me I'm lazy. That's really funny. Okay, guys, 1100 into diaper changer with the king high. We'd be making the call if uh, Money Mike decided to make uh, an all-in shove. Diaper changer calling. We will continue with our drive here with uh, king. That's what we do. Let's see what Diver Changer does. Little raise, huh? Well, this is going to hurt for you, Diver Changer, if you got like an Ace Nine. It's going to hurt for us if you have like an Ace Deuce. at 9750 or that that's gonna hurt for us too nice hand we were drawn dead and got there Transliteration is what that's called. Seattle Pro lets us know. Transliteration. Uh, Rob K saying, Hi, what are your thoughts on Hold'em X and will you stream that game? I would stream that game if I was on the GPL, Rob K. That's pretty much the only way I could see myself streaming that game, though. Well, King Deuce. My thoughts on it, Rob K. Is I think it's I think it's uh, an unnecessary complication to uh, an otherwise good idea. I think the GPL is a good idea. I think that having the players stand up in a box playing a game that no one's ever really heard of is not such a great idea. But I definitely wish Alex Dreyfus and the GPL the best of luck. I think um, I think that you know, for all of our sakes, I hope it succeeds. I hope that it's wildly successful. It's close enough to poker, you know. You know, it's it's not really poker though, is it? You know, when uh... I don't know, 
I don't know, Rob. I, I, I think it's kind of silly. Hold him X. Uh, I, I think it's kind of silly. I was disappointed when uh, when people were talking about, oh, well, it's like there, there are these points, and then you can change your river card, or you can change it. It's like, what? What are you talking about? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that Steve Jackson game. I was actually talking to uh, Bob Hatter about this. There was Steve Jackson came up with something called Nightmare Chess. It looked like this. Let me find uh, the box cover. It looked like this, and how it worked was it looked like that. How it worked was you played regular chess, but then what, you'd have these cards that you would, you would kind of throw down, and it would it would let you do different things. Like maybe you'd have a card that like uh, a knight gets to move diagonally this turn, or you'd have a card that says uh, uh, you know. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know. What, what, what were some of the cards? Who knows? But it, it kind of took chess in a new direction. Hold'em X is kind of like that. Hold'em X is kind of like Nightmare Poker. It's, it's kind of, not, it's kind of like Steve Jackson's Nightmare Poker. Um, will, will the players who rank on the GPI? be able to adapt to a new game? I, I think so. I think most of them will be able to. But but it's hard to say, you know. I mean, poker is definitely a niche. Poker is one of these things. It's like a skill game where the, the top players in the world have, have dedicated 10, 12, 15 years to, to uh, you know, sometimes longer. You know, sometimes, you know, 30 years for, you know, to, to get good at a very specific game. And then you have all sorts of specialists, like Hold'em specialists, you know, or uh, stud specialists, mixed game specialists, no limit, you know, specialists versus limit specialists. It's too many S's. I feel like I'm uh, lisping. So now I'll present them with a new game that no one's ever heard of. I think that there are going to be certain poker players who are, are first gamesmen and then poker players who are going to be able to succeed in that environment. Uh, guys like Elky, for example. You know, that's a good example of a guy who... Uh, he, he comes... He's more of a gamesman than a poker player. You know, there, there's other people who I think are the opposite. I think that you know, they don't really have much of an interest in games. They play poker and only poker. Um... I, I, I've always been more of a gamesman than a poker player. Poker is, is just another game and, and a long you know, series of games that, that I like to play and I like to try to master. Um, if it was the World Series of Monopoly every year that was giving away uh, you know, seven-figure, eight-figure sums, $12 million for first place for the 2006 World Series of Monopoly, uh, I would try to be there. You know, there's a, there, there's a lot of games which I feel like I can't master. Um, the the first person shooter games, for example, I I feel like they're they're so they're so twitch heavy. Like it's, it's so much uh, that, that I just I, I don't think I've got the skill to to really be competitive in that environment. But maybe I mean I'm working on it. I've been playing a lot of Rust. I've been watching B Chills videos and uh, learning about you know small tactics maneuvering and you know, leapfrogging and things like that. And I, I recognize that it's a skill that I, that I can get better at. Rob K says, Hold'em X is a combination of poker and Hearthstone. Except it's not. Except it's not. It doesn't really have much to do with Hearthstone at all, and I think that uh, to, to frame it as, as such is just kind of uh, a wishful thinking by Alex Dreyfus. I, I don't think that it has, Hold'em X has anything to do with Hearthstone. Hearthstone is a, is a collectible card game. You know, Hearthstone is a uh, is a trading. Well, it's not a trading card game because you can't trade the cards. But it it doesn't. The only reason that he says it's a it's a combination of Hearthstone and, and poker is because Hearthstone is popular, and he wants Holdemax to be popular. And I have 
you know, I have a lot of respect for Alex and what he's trying to do with poker, and I, I, I hope that he succeeds. I just think that that Hold'em X is adding uh, an unnecessary twist that you know, it, it, now it's almost like you're parlaying. Not now, not only do you have to have uh, you know the GPL be successful, but now you're also parlaying that with you have to have this new game capture the imagination of the public. So it, it seems to me like if it's 30% for this and 10% for this, now you're giving yourself a, a, a 3% chance of success. It, it seems to me like it's a parlay. Uh, maybe not. But if Hold'em X bombs, then the GPL bombs. That's the problem. That's why it, it kind of irks me that, that, that this would be the case, that... <sighs> You wouldn't just go with the tried and true formula of okay, let's just play no limit hold'em. It seems to me like you know that is what people watch, and that is what um, has been popular on TV. You start throwing in these complications of you got so many points, and you know it's going to take like five or ten minutes of of, of onboarding per show just to explain what's going on. Nilesy. Nilesy, it's great to see you. I'm sorry to hear that, though. He says, I, I myself seem to have been uh, some kind of chest infection. I'm coughing. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that, my friend. But hope you win this tourney. I do, too, man. I do, too. Right now, we're uh, middle of the pack in it. 24 out of 47. Um, well, it's good that we got that add-on, isn't it, boys? We got $1,828 up top. Let me go ahead and get the... Uh, payouts up and pretty interesting watching power KC with that ace jack play that way that way ace jack suited uh, and now it's going all in all in and this is an easy fold for us aces and queens what a flop that would have been. Hey, and guys, I want to remind you, if you're watching the stream uh, and you haven't clicked on the follow button yet, just click on the follow button. It doesn't cost you anything. It's very, very easy to do. And I love this. We're going to be able to make it 1900 here. Isolate the open limper, give him the bony fish for open limping. And we get to have the best hand, too. Deluxe decides to go ahead and throw a wrench in our plan. Ace, eight, three. Should be the best hand. It's also a hand that we can check back if we get checked, too. Because we are... Uh, crushing what we're putting these guys on or they're crushing us but there's not much of a there, there's not much of danger there, there's not much danger in giving a free card in this spot so Ovidiu decided to go ahead and bet 3412 make the call see what Deluxe does and a three kind of screws us because now now our 10 doesn't play so I guess now we have to hope that he's got a jack and will pay us off. That's what he had. King jack, queen jack. Jack eight is what he had. Wow. Jack eight off suit. So we actually kind of got lucky and, and uh, he actually had five outs and we let him get there. Wow. Not really on our radar there, Ovidiu. Haha, <laughs> that's pretty funny, Dorajar. He says, Dutch, I've been wanting to ask you this for a while. What is the difference between a good poker player and a great one? The river card. That is the uh, that is the god honest answer. Here's the here's the truth, Dorajar. Okay, this is the dirty truth. The elephant in the room is life is not long enough for there to be, uh, you know, for for the for the long term to catch up to a poker player, especially when it comes to live events, especially when it comes to what uh, you know? What the world determines as indicative of a great player. 
there just aren't that many main events. There just aren't that many World Series of Poker events for, uh, you know, for expectation to actually be realized. So what is the difference between a good player and a great player? I would submit to you the river card. Take TJ Cloutier for an example. Uh, by all accounts, he's a good player. Is he a great player? Is he one of the best players in the world, if not the best player in the world in his prime? It, wouldn't he be? Why wouldn't he be? Well, remember this guy came in second place in the main event twice. And both times he got it in uh, as a pretty significant favorite for the, the majority of the chips when it was heads up. Like the, the vast majority. Like it's, it's like, okay, if this hand goes his way, he wins. The first time was against Chris Ferguson. The second time was against, I don't remember. But uh, I, I, I do know that if those river, you know, if, if, if those runouts had been different, both times I think he was three and a half to one. Heads up, three and a half to one to win the main event. If those went his way and he had won the main event twice, I think that T.J. Cloutier would be listed as, you know, one of the greatest of all time. He would be listed in the same breath as Eric Seidel and Phil Ivey. I think, you know, they would be talking about him in the same reverence that they talk about Stu Unger or, uh, you know, Doyle Brunson. Instead, it didn't happen for him. And uh, that's the difference. So now he's just like, you know, one of the best players, not greatest of all time. The river card, my friend. Tim Microsoft asking, is this still in sub mode? It is. It's going to be in sub mode for a little while. Astromixin. Astromixin. That sounds like a brand name drug. I don't know what... That's, that's kind of weird. What a flop, Ace-10. Gosh. What a flop. I feel so happy right now. Not only is this uh, just a perfect flop for A's 10, but it's also the kind of flop where one of these guys can have a really strong second best hand with like an ace queen or an ace jack. Uh, we might have a really strong second best hand too if one of these guys decided to call a, a, a shove and a, and a raise with pocket fives. That could happen. You know, Astro Mixon could have a set of fives, in which case this is going to be a pretty sure, you know, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. Uh, Astro Mixon firing out 8,500 He could have a set of fives, guys. But I don't think he does. I think that we're looking at ace jack, ace king, ace queen. I think that we're looking at a three outer for him. And we're like 90, uh, 94, 93% to win the hand. So, yeah, that's a good card for us. It doesn't change anything. The pot's big enough where I think that we're going to go ahead and uh, break him unless he has a set of fives. I guess he could also have a set of aces or a set of tens, but that's that's much less likely than a set of fives. Ace-10 versus pocket-10s, and we're down to $8. Nice hand there, Astro Mixon. Wah, 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 wah. Boom. We're all in for our last, this, 56. That sucked. That sucked. Sometimes, I guess, we can get away from that in live situations where we can have like a, a super strong read on a player but there's just no way we're getting away from top two pair in that spot uh, in an online environment where we don't so that's gonna do it for us I think I mean we're not out of it but we're out of it I hope that you guys all have an awesome uh, rest of the weekend and uh, yeah I'm gonna be back to I'm gonna be back 
on probably Thursday. It's going to depend a little bit on when. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Nice hand there, diaper changer. Nice hand, Astro Mixon. Well done with the pocket tens, setting it out, getting that one card that is really going to mess us up. You know, it's funny because if it came 10 high, it's not like we're busting there. It has to come out exactly that, ace-10 rag, um, for us to actually go broke in that hand. So not only does he have to catch a one-outer, but he has to catch a one-outer and we have to catch a three-outer. It's pretty unfortunate. 40 out of 80. Would you like to watch tournaments hand history? No, that just tilts me when you ask me that. Not too happy about it, you guys, but that is how it goes. That is poker. One minute you're the chip leader. The next minute you are staring at the screen wondering what happened. But, uh, guys, it's been it's been fun. And I hope that you guys are, uh, are going to be uh, having a nice week. I'll be hitting up the WSOP circuit. You see that uh, right behind me. Why? Why is it? Yeah, WSOP circuit over at Bally's. Uh, I'm not sure which one we're hitting up, but we'll be hitting up one of them. And uh, really appreciate all of you joining us. I hope that your weekend goes well, and I hope that your week goes well. Thanks so much for uh, supporting the stream with your views. Make sure to follow the stream. Click on that follow button. And uh, thank you very much to all of our subscribers. You guys are the absolute best. We'll see you later.